Don't think they're not going to go for broke. They know America's waking up. They're going to pull something. Everybody can see it. Everybody can feel it. We know the M.O., the history of these people. So do you have your eyes peeled? What's your gut tell you is coming next? That's what we're talking about right now, the next big event. Or what do you think the big events of 2015 will be or in the last month coming up of 2014? Let's talk to Slim in Canada. Slim, what's your view? Uh, my view is I think we're gonna, they're going to come out of left field with this one. Uh, you know, they came at us with 9-11, and they gave us – we didn't expect that. So I think they're going to give us something unexpected. It's nothing to do with ISIS, nothing to do with Ebola, nothing to do with all the stuff that they're trying to scare us. What they're doing is they're basically priming us to put us in a state of fear, which for me personally isn't working. Uh, but uh, – they want to do something that's completely out of the box, I'm thinking. And it's going to be something like, uh, I think it's going to be health-related. I mean, you know, you could see that they're upping the, uh, you know, the bioengineering or whatever, geoengineering. These days you see a lot more planes in the sky. Well, that's what Obama said. He said this is a trial run for something airborne much worse, and it is. This whole Ebola thing is a trial run. Can they order the media to lie and cover stuff up, and will they go along with the order to stand down and clearly yes the media is now ready to jeopardize themselves and the entire future of this nation and the world by being subservient supine uh horribly demonic lapdogs uh, nesting on the uh chest of this 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 corrupt system well they don't call it paid programming for nothing we're the ones who are trying to be programmed there that's that's the key i mean they're trying to program us we're not watching program we're being programmed so i mean the media is going to try and spin it to the sheep as much as they can and try and put their spin on it and put us like i said put us out of left field just like they did with all the other false flags i mean we just found out that the here in canada that the one that we had here was completely a false flag i mean the guy turns out wasn't even i mean there's some cases that are showing that the guy wasn't even a canadian citizen let alone a guy in the military well i'll tell you how it's false flag Major Hassan that shot and killed 13 people, wounded huge numbers of others. For two years, the CIA was watching him, talking to the supposed head of al-Qaeda, al and they declared national security on those emails, never told the army, knew he was going to do it and let him do it. Just like they've helped fund al-Qaeda to attack Assad, they turn around, run into Iraq, grab the oil fields, and then go, oh my goodness, what are we going to do? They're false flagging us in front of us. You know, false flags don't mean the government carries the attack out every time. Sometimes they just fund the nutbags and then open the door for them to do it. Great point. So you're looking for biological terrorism or staged al-Qaeda terrorism in 2015 so we learn to worship our captors. Let's go to John in Wisconsin, uh, formerly Wisconsin, FEMA Region 5. Thanks for holding her on the air. Yeah, Alex, how you doing today? Good, brother. What do you think the next big shoe to drop is? I don't know. I think this whole thing about the uh, XL pipeline is like a hoax, and we're being played because you notice that all the Democrats are against it, and they're just pushing, pushing, pushing against the Republicans and this, that, and the other thing. And when in reality, it has no benefit to us. We're not getting any of the oil. We're not getting anything to do with that except uh, you know, it made more jobs down in New Orleans loading the ships. That's about it. And all it's going to do, I think, is to further the North American Union. Well, I'm not disagreeing with you that most of our Western oil gets loaded on ships and sent to China at lower prices than we get, uh, sold to the government at lower prices. They mark it up at, at higher prices than, than what we pay. I'm not disagreeing with you, but the, if you're talking about the Keystone, they built a $3 billion refinery uh, in Corpus Christi that the federal government's been not letting them open for years. We haven't had one new refinery since like 1981, and this is economic sabotage. And then George Soros, who financed, along with Berkshire Hathaway, the feds not letting the Keystone get activated, they own the railroad. You can look this up. This is in Forbes, AP, you name it, that then trans ships from the middle uh, of Canada and the east of Canada all the way over to the west to the super tankers to go to China and Japan. Uh, so, I, I mean, tell me if I'm wrong, because I don't understand. You're saying you don't think the Keystone Pipeline will give us oil? 
Well, I, I haven't heard any of that uh, coming from any politician's mouth or anything. Uh, the thing is, is that will they, uh, are we going to be able to buy the gas for what they're selling it to China for, which is probably... No. Be no, I mean, obviously they're going to sell most of it to foreigners because they'll... Look, look, look. All I know is we need to be energy dependent, and, the, and, and, and Obama and others have been trying to block that for a long time. And if George Soros doesn't want the pipeline. Uh, I mean, why shouldn't we have a pipeline to bring Canadian oil down here? I mean, that's all I'm saying is more oil means cheaper prices. And uh, I know they're blocking that refinery. Now, they're saying that refinery may produce gas as well and sell refined gas. So who knows? We'll see what happens. I appreciate your call. You know, I just kind of default. When George Soros is for something, I'm against it. He's for taking my guns. I'm against it. He's for open borders. I'm against it. He's for attacking the family. I'm against it. He's for decriminalizing marijuana. I'm for it. But then him being for it makes me question my judgment. I don't know. Uh, let's go to Maggie in Oklahoma. What do you think the next big shoe to drop is in 2015? Um, I think that the, the uh, our Justice Department has totally become corrupt, and the fact that it has is going to hit the fan very soon. I totally agree with you. Uh, I think that the reason government acts like we don't exist anymore is they know that with derivatives and economic indicators being uh, collapse level, no way to hold up the house of cards. It's like having a house of cards in your backyard on a still day on a card table. But you know, even though it's a still day, a gust of wind will come by sometime that day and knock those cards over. And a watch pot never boils, but you're going to be looking out the back window, the kitchen window, and those cards are going to be laying all over the ground. And uh, most experts we interview think the big collapse is in 2015. And I want to be clear. I'm not a... Uh, I'm not a voyeur for disaster. I'm not a collapse porn uh, uh, consumer. I hope this doesn't happen. I hope we can mitigate and have a soft landing. But the globalists are only accelerating things that will make the collapse worse. And we see government gearing up for collapse everywhere. Uh, what else do you think? That, that this gust of wind has a name on it, and his name is Schaefer Cox. C -H -S -C -H -A -F -F -E -R -C -O -S. Who is that? Uh, he is a young man that, that was uh, thrown into jail two years ago. Um, well, I'll tell you what, send me some info, man, because I'm not aware of what you're getting into. Thank you. Chris in Pennsylvania, you're on the air. Go ahead. Yeah, I think that uh, Americans are going to wake up on a massive scale, and we're going to get big government out of our lives and start ruling ourselves again like we were supposed to. And we're going to hold these criminals responsible for their crimes against humanity and take the info they have on how the world really works on who we really are, free energy technology, and we're going to become free and prosperous again and show the rest of the world how to do it, and we'll live to be 200 years old and colonize space and explore the galaxy. Sounds good to me. You know, I know this. It's innovation that gets debt economies going, and the globalists are doing everything they can to give lip service innovation but blocking it, and it is going to be freer energy, free energy. It's going to be things like that that they're suppressing that would be the next, just like the Silicon Revolution, that'll be our next boom. Any, anything else, uh, Chris? God bless you. Steve in Florida, what do you see as the next big uh, event or globalist staged event? I like the last caller because he was raising the point of a huge awakening happening in 2015, accelerating the awakening we've already seen. Uh, I agree with Slim earlier. I believe uh, they would like to initiate the Model States Emergency Health Powers Act nationwide with max vac mass vaccinations and, and perhaps a financial collapse. And I've not spoken to you in, since 99 or 2000, but I just met a young man just a week or two ago who placed Alex Jones InfoWars billboards uh, in 13 major U.S. cities. I just saw one a week ago, and I'll name the cities if you wish. Yeah, I'd like to meet the young man that did it and find out more and, 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 and get other people to step up and do this. Yeah, tell us about it. Here are the cities, Richmond, Virginia, Raleigh, North Carolina, Columbia, South Carolina, Pensacola, Florida, Birmingham, Alabama, Gulfport and Jackson, Mississippi, Knoxville, Tennessee, Shreveport, Baton Rouge, Lafayette, and Lake Charles, Louisiana, and Little Rock, Arkansas. He spent this money, his own money, because unless Americans wake up now, the nation is finished. He told me that to my own face. I've followed and supported and prayed for you for 20 years. I'm going to continue, and I want to encourage you, never give up, and always stay close to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Steve, don't hang up. I recognize your voice. 
you, you, I mean, you were calling like 18 years ago, and I haven't yes. talked to you in over a decade. You used yes. to call all the time. Uh, it, it's a great to talk to you, buddy. Same here. I've been dealing with Gulf War syndrome and a lot of the former Navy SEALs with whom I served and a lot of the Marines, they've died, but I continue to stay vigilant for our Lord and to support you. That's right. I remember all the great intel you used to give us uh, back on what was happening uh, when they ordered the Marines, remember? It was even in the, in, the, in the newspaper to tell the kids, Bill Clinton wants you to know what martial law is like. Remember that? Yes, exactly. Wow, yeah, I remember. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So um, I just want to encourage everybody listening. I've passed out thousands of flyers with info wars over the years. I just don't know who picked them up or whatever. I passed them out to people. I just thank the Lord that I had that ability. Now I'm pretty much too sick with Gulf War illness to do much except get on this phone and encourage anybody else that has legs and a brain to perhaps do a little bit or a lot like this young man. Forty thousand dollars he spent of his own money for what because of what you've been doing for twenty plus years encouraging folks out here to do it. Well, let me know who this young man is. He's to get in touch with us because there's all these businessmen and women and successful folks that we should create a, 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 a you know a database of stations, and then they can help put billboards up in those areas. Billboards are very inexpensive now because the economy is in so much trouble. So you can really get huge billboards that would have cost ten thousand dollars fifteen years ago for like a thousand dollars, including the printing. And it would be, and I, and I think Infowars isn't perfect, but it's one of the better things to promote. Uh, and absolutely, that's the reason we keep exploding is people like that. But, yeah, this fellow that called in used to give me a lot of intel on Special Forces stuff. All of it turned out to be accurate. And uh, just God bless you. Uh, let's talk to Ken in Illinois. Ken, you're on the air. Thanks for holding. Uh, we're all aware of these Chinese cities, empty cities, that there could hold tens of millions yes. of people. And it doesn't make sense. Well, what if those cities are prepared for uh, uh, debtors' prison for American debt slaves? And the plan has been in the work for works for decades. And, and here's the basis for that: uh, before the uh, Federal Reserve, which you know we know is private cartel evil, there was an act uh, during the Grant administration called the uh, District of Columbia Organic Act of 1871, which bifurcated a human into a public persona and a private person. So there's Alex Jones, private person. And who, there's Alex Jones, you know, the corporate fiction. The corporate fixture, and we are debt chattel to American debt. No, it's and true. So I mean, what, they do sell us as an IMF World Bank commodity. It's true. Right. So what if there's, you know, maybe it starts out voluntary. There's jobs in China. But what if it ends up being compulsory and we end up. By the way, sir, they have already are bringing debt prisons back in Illinois and places illegally, but the judges and courts are just doing it. Uh, and they're already doing bail-ins where they grab part of your bank account all over the world. So, you know what? Used to, I'd laugh at you. Sky's the limit. I mean, there's no telling what they're going to pull. They already claim that the average American owes something like $200,000 on the national debt. I don't owe that money. I'm already paying more than half. I mean, it's a total scam. I hear you. What else do you think is coming? Oh, well, I don't know. I mean, I just, I, some people say, I think it was Harry Dent yesterday, talked about investing in RV stock. I just, I'm afraid of the, once the collapse hits, it's going to be so frightening that we're all going to perish from fear. You know, I agree with you. I've got an RV, but it's too big, and I think I'm going to get rid of it and just get a quick, you know, super reliable, uh, small one for just that type of scenario. Excellent point, sir. Thank you so much for joining us, calling in. Uh, Indigo Kid, then Ron in Hawaii, you're calling from Colorado. What do you think the big event is in 2015? Well, uh, it's weather modification is something I'm looking at right now uh, quite a bit. Um, for example, I sent you an article that I've written about uh, how the Colorado flood of 2013 was due to cloud seeding. And there's even a CBS News article out about how uh, cloud seeding is being used by the government to uh, fight the drought that's going on. And basically, I'll, you'll have to read the article, but it's, it's really all about water wars and tactical droughts and how big cities like Los Angeles and Las Vegas are paying for Colorado, for example, the cloud seeding.